Hey guys, it's Issy the Medic. Welcome to my first video. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I am starting Warwick's Graduate Medical School in September and I am so excited because it has been a five-year journey and I'm finally there. I started this YouTube channel to inspire you guys. Those of you who are interested in the profession, those of you who are already going into the profession, or those of you who are simply interested in knowing what medics do. I'm so excited to start documenting my journey and sharing it with you guys. And um, I hope that you guys follow me and continue to follow me. Um, yeah, so let's get started on my first video. I'm gonna talk to you guys about my journey. This is because I got a lot of questions from people about how I stayed motivated whilst I was applying. You know, tell me about your journey. Oh my gosh, you had four tries. So I'm just gonna like expand on it and, you know, talk about how long the process, what it took me to get here. So yeah, please stay tuned. If you have any questions about anything whatsoever, please drop it in the comments below and I will get back to you. So let me tell you guys about the first time I applied. This was in a levels i was 17 i remember when i took the ucat as well the week before i was in turkey on a school trip one week i revised for the ucat i did the exam and yeah it yeah it didn't go very well so i was like Do you know what i was being optimistic let me just put an application in and yeah so for <laughs> i got bang 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 four rejections i was like okay that's fine I just need to get my three A's and I can take a gap year and reapply. I got A, A, B. Like, I was just like, the B was in maths. Yeah, don't even. And the thing is, A, A, B, they're amazing grades. But for medicine, it just wasn't good enough. And I was so upset. In my head, I was like, maths needs to just get in the bin. Like, please. I was just like, please, why? Why? Just one thing after another. But I was like, it's okay. Because I have another alternative there's another way through basically i'd apply to exeter as my fifth choice and they were offering a transfer into medicine with their medical sciences course so i was like okay this is perfect i'm gonna go to exeter and i'm gonna transfer into medicine so exeter gave me a place and i went there and they were like okay you need to be in the top 10 percent to be considered and get an interview so i was like yeah i can do this so i worked during the year, I worked hard, but there were points where I was like this, I was finding it so difficult. Like it was just a battle between I give up, I can do this, I give up, I can do this the whole year. But guess what? I got a really, really, really high grade in first year and I managed to get an interview. I bagged an interview. I was like, okay, this is it. Like I'm finally going to do this. I was like, I was nervous, but I was like, please, like I've worked really hard. Got the interview, didn't get a place. And the thing is, right, I was just, I was like, now I'm on this course that I picked solely because of medicine. There's a few mistakes I made and that was picking a course just because of medicine and then kind of being stuck on it. And you know what? I did feel sorry for myself for like the whole, like a few months. But then I was like, do you know what? You can actually just forget about it. You can't change that. What you can do now is elevate yourself, get more experience, learn more about medicine. So that's what I did. I just took it, took it as a pinch of salt and continued. So after this, I decided that, you know what, Issy, it's time to like, yeah, work on yourself and get more mature and things like that. So that's what I decided to do. I got work experience. I worked in the hospital as a healthcare assistant. I joined society committees. I joined medical leadership and management society committee at Exeter. Like I started going to uh, conferences and things like that and started really to get involved and educate myself about what it's like to be in the medical profession. And to be honest, it was really, really like, yeah, I really enjoyed having those experiences. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that you know, I benefited from being in uni was just maturing in myself and the decisions I make. Try number three. I apply to three graduate unis and I apply to Exeter because Exeter, where I was at the time, was offering guaranteed interviews for those who were at two ones. So it was sort of an internal process-ish. 
Uh, so yeah, I applied there. Uh, but the only issue was that I could not afford an undergrad. Like, yeah, I couldn't afford an undergrad degree at all. Like, yeah, it was just not an option because the government doesn't fund a second undergraduate degree, which is it's just difficult. But anyway, yeah. So I got no offers and no interviews at all from the three unis. And I was gutted because I knew I needed to be on a graduate course just because I the financial pressures for me on a, a postgrad, on a, sorry, on an undergrad would be too much. So, yeah, Exeter offered me a place, but because of financial circumstances and other personal issues, I couldn't go and I was so, yeah, it was a really hard choice I had to make, but yeah, I just needed to take a gap year and redo everything, like re just have a relook at everything. I achieved a first class in my medical sciences degree. I was over the moon. I was so happy because I really struggled with that degree, especially in final year. It was difficult, but I persevered. And also, it was nice knowing that I had a little boost to my UCAS application going forward. I'd also like to add that at the time of my application up until now, in my gap year, I've been working at a medium to cure forensic mental health hospital, which really strengthened my applications and had so many experiences there that actually added to my um, interviews as well and gave me so much experience. I've learned so much from working there as well. So yeah, that's another thing I just wanted to quickly add. So now we're on try number four. Um, I was like, back to square one. I reflected though, I was like, what is it that means that I'm not getting interviews through UCAS? The only times I'd had interviews was through my UD internally. I was like, what is it on my UCAS application that means that, you know, the unis aren't basically, yeah, considering me? So I just thought about it and I was like, okay, just try again. My UCAS, my UCAT for one, I did that again and I had never worked so hard for it and I got scored in the top 10% in the UK. Uh, my personal statement, I had a lot of experience, but I was like, okay, how can you really reflect on this experience and learn from it and things like that? So my personal statement felt good and I just felt good about my application this time. I was like, yeah, like, Issy, put one in and see what happens ended up getting three interviews out of the four places I applied to, like the four graduate medical schools I'd applied to. I was just over the moon. I was so excited. Um, I got one offer from Warwick and two, re and I got two rejections. So I didn't get a place from Birmingham or Southampton. And to be fair, in my Birmingham interview, it was my first one and I was really nervous and that seriously affected the way I um, express myself in the interview so I sort of understood why I didn't get an offer from there and my Southampton interview went well but I didn't get in my opinion but I didn't get an offer and yeah I was just really really happy it's been something I've been working for for so long especially because of the the last time I had with Exeter and the offer and having to you know drop my application it was really really difficult but I succeeded. So how did I stay motivated? One thing I did to stay motivated was the people surrounding me. A lot, some of the people surrounding me were on the same journey. Like I had friends who wanted to do medicine as well, who were grad, who were in uni. And it was just having that push, like we were all pushing each other along. And to be fair, quite a few of us now, like I think most of us now are on graduate entry courses or undergrad courses. So it's just having people around you that share the same vision. That is so important. Like, I can't stress enough how much that helped me, that how much that kept me going, having people beside me on my journey that were doing the same thing. Also, uh, for those of you who aren't, like, technically around people who are doing the same thing as you, who are on the same journey as you, it's also nice to like look on social media or look online and see people who are on your journeys, people that look like you, that 
are doing what you want to do. Those things are really inspiring because you see that person, you're like, yeah, you know what, they're doing it. That means that it's possible I can get there too. So you may not necessarily be surrounded by people on your journey, but you can definitely look to people or ask for advice um, from people who are already on the journey that aren't necessarily surrounding you. Another thing that kept me going was having a clear a clear view of where I wanted to be. When times were difficult, I was like, okay, I know where I want to be and I don't know when I'm going to get there, but everything I'm doing now is going to get me there. So for example, I was thinking that if I don't get in this year, that's fine because then I have another year to work on myself and build up my application. That is another thing. One more thing is that there is time. There is time. Never, ever, ever do you ever think that you are running out of time. You are not running out of time. As long as you are going for your goals, as long as you're working towards your goals, whenever you get there is at your right time. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, you're too old, you're too this. Who said? You can be 40, 50 and say, oh, I want to change my profession. Nothing's set in stone. So just remember that you have time to do what you want to do. Another thing I want to say is, like, there's more to you than the medical application. That's one thing that kept me going. Every time I feel so down about it, oh, medicine, my life is not just about medicine. There's so much more about me than the medical application. There's so much more about me than my UCAT score, than my grades. Like, what I recommend is, you know, go on holiday if you can, see your friends. I mean, obviously there's COVID-19, but uh, just remember that these things, there's more to you than being a medic. And that's one of the things that kept me going. Like, I think sometimes I get it all in my head, like, oh, I'm not in medicine. But I'm like, yeah, but you're doing other great things with your life right now. You're at uni or you're joining societies or if you're just reading loads of books or you're just, you know, you're doing something with yourself. That's all I have to say. Like, there's more to you than just the medical application. And that's one thing that will actually keep you going. There's more to you than just this. Like, if I don't get it this year, there's many other things I can do with my life during the year that's going to make me even better, that's going to give me even more, more knowledge. And that's going to probably even elevate my medical ac application the next time. So honestly, that's my word of advice for you when it comes to motivating yourself whilst reapplying. Thank you so much for watching my first video. Um, please like, comment and subscribe. Please let me know if you have any feedback. I'd really appreciate it because I'm still learning and this is my first time on YouTube. So anything from you would be, would be lovely. Um, thank you so much for watching my first video and I hope to see you soon again. Bye.